Hello friends, this video on Plea Block Elements Part 1 is brought to you by examclear.com. No more fear from exam. So objective of this lesson is to learn the general trend in the P-block elements. You need to understand the physical and chemical properties of group 13 and group 14. Please note, we'll be taking only group 13 and group 14 in this chapter. We'll understand the uh, special behavior of boron and carbon. We'll define the allotropes of carbon. And we'll learn some important compound of boron, carbon and silicon. We'll also list some uses of the group 13 and group 14 elements and their compounds. So this is what we'll cover in this chapter. So let's start with the first question, what are P-block elements, right? So the P-block elements are nothing but the elements in the periodic table whose last electron enters P orbital. You know, the last electron enters P orbital. So if you see, this is the periodic table, the one in this side, the little orange in color, these are my P-block elements. And if you want to zoom this, the P-block elements are nothing but the boron family, the carbon family, the nitrogen family, oxygen family, chlorine family and the, uh, this gas, noble gas. These are my P-block elements, that is group 13 to group 18. We'll discuss more about the P-block elements in the next few slides and understand that P-block element nothing but group 13 to group 18 elements. And why are they called P-block elements? Because the last electron enters P-block, P orbital. We'll discuss more about this in the next few slides. But before we go through this chapter, let's understand why should we study P-block elements? What are the applications of P-block elements in our day-to-day -day life? So if you see the coal which is used extensively in, to produce electricity in the villages it is used to produce uh, it is used in the uh, in the stoves to cook food right? this is nothing but a p block element it's carbon if you see the diamond itself which uh, uh, is used to create make the ornaments it's very costly this is also a p block element and actually this is also carbon the combination of Coal and carbon is same. We'll talk about these later. If you see antiseptics, again the P-block elements are used to create antiseptics. If you talk about the pressure cookers, aluminium is used here. If you see in the extraction of uh, metals from the ores, a lot of P-block elements are used. The aluminium foil, which you must have seen, right, to wrap food, uh, this, is, this is nothing but a P-block element is aluminium. In tires, we used uh, P-block elements to vulcanize the tire to make it hard. We'll talk about that. Urea, if you see, to create urea, urea is nothing but a fertilizer and this feeds the body. Uh, it's a good, it is a reason why we have so much food because this helps to increase the output of wheat and uh, rice, you know, vegetables. This is also made from P-block elements. If you see the, the racket which we use to play tennis, these uh, wires are, has to be hard, right? These wires which is just has to be hard. So here also my P-block elements are used to make this wires hard. If you see the pencils, earlier the lead was used, now the graphite is used here, right? And they are also P-block elements. In fact, the lead was also P-block element and the graphite is also P-block element. The lead is not, not used because that is harmful and graphite is not harmful so graphite is used. The utensils which we use in our home, the steel utensils, they are also made up of P-block elements. The paints which we use to color our homes, they are also made of P-block elements. The fire extinguisher, chips, it's a very critical thing. The chip, this is the reason why we have mobile phones, laptop, computers, iPad, fan, desktop washing machine, fridge, TV, any electronic gadget you think of that has this chips and these chips are made of silicon and they are nothing but P-block elements. So these, this chip is something which has revolutionized the whole world actually. It has given of comfort to us. If you talk about the air conditioner or you talk about the refrigerator, you talk about the music system, you talk about the iPod, iPad, everything is made of silicon chips and these are nothing but P-block elements. Human being itself, you see, we have a good amount of carbon dioxide and other P-block elements in this. I mean, this is critical for us because if you see, right, we take oxygen and give, give carbon dioxide. 
so carbon dioxide is nothing but carbon is a p block element so p block element is there in our body itself the battery you see earlier here also lead was used but now graphite is used here also p block element carbon is used here the wires the heavy wires are made of aluminium because conduct conductivity is more so here also you see the p block elements are used if you talk about the pot the porcelain there also p block elements are used to create this if you talk about the nuclear reactors nuclear reactor if you see the nuclear reactor p block elements are used to control the speed of the neutron so if you see p block elements are everywhere if you talk about electricity it comes from coal if you talk about jewelry if you talk about the batteries or human being if you talk about computers you talk about washing machine everywhere we have p block elements you will talk about the tires in fact p block elements were also used for anti knocking agent in the cars diesel diesels and petrols so if you see p block elements are everywhere so that that is the need there's a need for us to understand these p block elements right because we use them extensively everywhere in the kitchen utensils to the paints a lot of places we use it right so it's good to understand these p block elements so that we can understand the behavior of this p block elements so let's start with the properties of p block as i told the last electron enters the p orbital and if you see the p orbitals looks like this so we have studied this in the atom chapter where we have talked about the orbitals the shape of the p orbitals and if you don't understand these p orbitals please watch my videos on the atoms where we discuss this uh, uh, shapes and size of the p orbital if you see the p orbitals can occupy at the max six electrons right one here one here one 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 so six electrons it can accommodate and that's why we have six groups there in the p blocks right so if you see the p orbitals can accommodate six electrons and thus we have six groups group 13 to group 18 this first electron second third fourth fifth sixth right so there are six electrons which a p orbital can accommodate so we have six groups for p block elements it's a very good question actually why we have six groups for p block elements for example if you see for s block we had two groups right group one group two why because the s orbital looks something like this and it can accommodate at the max two electrons so it had two groups when you talk about p blocks p orbitals is like this right six three p orbitals we have px this is py pz three p orbitals we have and these three p orbitals can accommodate at the max six electrons so we have six groups and the electronic configuration of the p block element the general one is ns2 np126 that means it the p can have value 1 to 6 for example it can be ns2 np1 it can be ns2 np2 or ns2 np3 or ns2 np4 or ns2 np5 something like that you can have any of the value or ns2 np6 also right so because this is 1 to 6 min it can have any of the value write a general configuration we wrote the general electronic configuration for a p block element is ns2 np6 if you see here the last electron is entering p block p uh, p orbitals and that's why it is p block correct and the good part you see in the s block we had only metals but the unique part of the p block element is that we have metals we have non-metals and we have metalloids also We'll talk about this. You see, the boron is a non-metal, the aluminium is a metal. We'll talk about these metal, non-metals, metalloids in the next few slides. We just understand that in the P block elements, we have all metals, non-metals, metalloids, all exist together. That is a unique property that we have all metals, non-metals, and metalloid in one block. And there is a lot of variation. If you see, when I'm saying that we have some are metals, some are non-metals, some are metalloids. It clearly means there are a lot of variation in the physical and chemical property in this group, right? Because some becomes metal, some is non-metal, some because gives as some oxides have acidic behavior, some have basic behavior, some are neutral, because some are metal, some are non-metal, right? So the metallic property varies. And thus the physical and chemical properties varies a lot, a lot in this group. There's a lot of variation in the properties, physical and chemical properties. It will be good and understanding, interesting thing to learn here. So hope I have cleared 
all these things here. They call p block because the last electron in the p orbitals. So in p orbitals, we can accommodate the max six electrons. So there are six groups, thirteen to eighteen. The general configuration is ns two, np one to six. And the best part of this group is we have metal, non-metals, and metalloids all exist together. And there's a lot of variation in the physical and chemical properties observed in this group. Correct. Also, there is a good thing observed is it is actually it is an S block also. The first member of the group have different property than other groups, other members. They I think in S and P S block also we have seen the first element they had different properties as compared to other for example lithium and barium you see in the s block had different uh, chemical and physical properties as compared to other elements for example sodium magnesium all those elements right so why because they have small size the this small size the, the main issue is the small size and this is almost universally applicable the first elements they have different property than the other elements of the group mostly because of small size so these guys have different Property. They are special. Let's see how before we start the p block elements. Let's see how they look. The boron looks something like this. Uh, the aluminium looks like this. You must have seen this. Gallium like this. Indium like this. Carbon is like this. The nitrogen is a liquid form, right? Oxygen also liquid. Uh, fluorine is like this. And all this are uh, new. What do call it? the noble gas looks like this. Uh, the bromine is a liquid. Thing right, chlorine also liquid, sulfur is a solid, uh, single phosphorus also solid. So if you see the property varies, right? Some are solid, some are liquid, some are gaseous. So this is how they look actually. All these uh, p block elements. If you want, you can pause the video now and you can uh, look at how they look actually. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos. Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.